with this one yet? Have you done studied this yet? The 5,000 year leap? Oh yeah, I have. Okay. I have it in the bedroom. I think we did, uh, uh, the Sisters of Liberty did that for a while. Yes, how long have you been going? Oh, on and off for, since before COVID. Yeah. But like the last eight or nine months I haven't been because of, um, we were selling our business. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah. So I started going, we moved to, um, to Utah Christmas, 2007. And I think it was 2009. I started going, but we had done the actual, the actual whole book of this. Oh gosh. In 2000, I'd say 10 or 11, but you weren't with us then the whole book. Uh -uh. And then we no, did I didn't, even, I didn't even live in Utah then. Oh, okay. So uh -huh. under um, the tab of Moms for America, um, if I click, oh, network error. Ew. Okay, here's here it is. Can you see that save our states? Uh-huh. Okay, so that's momsforamerica.us. And if you do want to get notifications about what's going on like nationwide, moms, you, you can do the 53445. And if you do the virtual cottage meetings, go under classes. And then um, do you see there's the cottage meeting series, Healing of America virtual, which is Cleon Skousen as well. And then the 5,000 year leap series. So if I click on the 5,000 year leap, <laughs> Um, it's got, I wanted to show. So if you haven't received one of these yet, I'll bring it to Sisters of Liberty, but have you, oh, I'm frozen in there. Can you see me on my face? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I can see you fine. Okay. I'm frozen on the thing, but it says 28 principles of Liberty and it's a bookmark in it. And so this, I bought like 500 of these so that we, um, you know, know these principles um, when we're talking with our legislators or, or anybody, you know, um, and the, okay. the, the classes, so they recorded them and they, so you can click on any of these and it was um, Julene Jackson and Colette started the, Sisters of Liberty in Lehigh. And before then, um, Robin Young and Jolene Jackson started it in oh, Oregon, Oregon. Um, after they saw Glenn Beck show and they saw him promoting the 5,000 year leap. And so when that happened, um, they said, why don't we, you know, because Glenn Beck had said, why don't you get your neighbors and read this together and discuss it? So that's what they did. They started their group. They called it Daughters of Liberty, I think. And then Julene moved to Utah first before Robin did. And then um, Julene and Colette were in the same area. So they started their group. And then Julene moved near me. And then that's how I got invite you know got to go over there because <laughs> before we went on zoom and stuff like that it was just you know people didn't know who we were and yeah you know, yeah and so um if you want to study this at the same time you can just watch these videos and they're they were doing them live I was trying to join all of them and I think there's okay principles I think this one has 12 videos and the healing of America has like 16 um and then but then, then the ones that we're doing, if we go back there, we're doing the virtual cottage meetings or the first 12, there's Jolene. Have you met Jolene? Have you met Jolene Jackson? I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe I have, I don't know everybody's name over there and I've kind of gone in and out. So I'm yeah. not. She, well, she hasn't come, I think for, her. she now lives in, in Maryland. So Maryland, right, right next to um, DC. But that's her, and so she is in charge of nationally of teaching. So here's all these um, virtual, you know, cottage meetings. But then they made professional videos out of them, which is um, I'm going to click on. Well, often. So this is on the sister, the Moms mm -hmm. of America website. Is that yes. where you are? Yeah. Okay. So it's called oh. MomsForAmerica.us. Okay. And so. 
if I click on, let me see, I think it looks a little different. Their website just keeps changing. Oh, there we go. I clicked on the 12 lessons. And the reason why I show people this when I teach is because they've got some really neat presentations um, and extra resources. So they, um, it, Kimberly Fletcher is the president and the CEO, and she started it. Um, and this is the new, the newer book. Can you see it? Because I'm frozen up in the corner. I don't know why. Yeah, I can see the website. Yeah, your 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 picture just went um, blank. Yeah. I wonder what um, what happened there. Okay, let me see. And then. Yeah, I lost you somewhere. Yeah. So then I guess my camera can't work. If I can't do that, then I can't show my books. Okay. Uh, well, I have down in your bottom left corner. And does your is your camera have a red line through it? Uh, bottom left corner. Okay. Stop. Or sometimes yeah. it's over on one of your sides. Okay. Let's see. Video me. I know this is where I'm always getting confused of things. Well, I can I can still. It's just the, the, I can show it through the website as long as you can see my screen. Okay, so can yeah. you, can see, you can see Anchored in Hope presentation one, right? Do you see Anchored in I Hope? I can see, um, yeah, I'm on my phone, so it's a little small. Yeah, I oh. can see Anchored in Hope. Okay, so then if I click the presentation resources, that's, when I, that's why I like to show people. Um, we can click and watch the video, which we will be doing, and it's uh, a shorter one, but there's all these beautiful um, extra things in here, like there's an article call called Coming Full Circle by Kimberly Fletcher or Anchored in Hope by Tammy Holes. Um, there is these movies like Kirk Cameron, uh, Monumental, um, in search of America's national treasure, treasure, our families are worth fighting for. I'm um, coming up. There's a national thing. Anybody can pay tickets if you want to go to Bronson, Missouri, and it's the weekend after fall break. I think it's October 22nd. Okay. Um, if anybody wants to go and um, buy tickets, and and Moms for America people are there, and they're hosting. Um, with Kirk Cameron. And then here's like, if you wanna buy any of the books, Raising a Generation of Patriots. This book right here, Pamela Romney Op Openshaw, um, she came to Moms for America and she got struck by lightning when she was young and became blind, remember? And she's a really amazing writer. And she, um, the she's now, the promises of the constitution, Her she writes these little vignettes that are just so amazing to be able to understand things. And she writes it so clearly that it's, it's just amazing. It's just really, really cool. And so one of the resources that I'm gonna teach from today, um, I'll show on my slide, is a, a woman out of Utah. And I just got to meet her in July when Kimberly came. But it's a, a book called Forgotten American Stories Celebrating America's Constitution. And it's got 12 lessons as well. And it has a virtue attached to each of those. So that's what I'm going to be doing. But OK, so I'm going to get back to the slides. OK, so now so you see moms. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me just a little bit more about Moms for America? Like, um, I know they're pretty recent, right? They started a year or two ago, or that was the first time I heard about them was maybe a year ago. You probably you just, just heard give me yeah. a little background about them and like what they're doing and that kind of stuff. Yes. And um, okay, so Moms for America was started by Kimberly Fletcher in 2004, and it was called Teacher Homemakers of America. Um, then she rebranded, and um, she's a mom that during 9-11, her husband was in the Pentagon. She has eight kids. Um, and then, you know, I think during the time that Julie moved here, she was um, stationed with her husband in Hawaii. And, um, but she's an amazing go-getter. And like, uh, she tells so many amazing stories. And so throughout here, you'll be listening to her because we're going to watch one of these little videos with her in it. Um, okay. And they've been able to, because now we uh, were able to get funding and we had a fundraiser last December, um, a, a big fundraiser at Mar-a-Lago, a lot of conservative um, Hollywood and, and, and conservative people that are willing to help donate and spread this. Because of what happened in 2020, 
Um, they, that Monster America started, it, you know, the silver lining is that, and same with Sisters of Liberty, we were able to, to do Zoom classes, right? And, and so now right. it's spread to like 500,000. And, and now our, our goals are bigger. We want to be able to connect in different ways. So our initiative right now is called Mom Vote. And if you go on to that website I was just on, you can click on there and each of our states will have a way for us to connect and how to make sure that we get reminders of how to vote. And then if, were you at Jen and uh, the two red pills ladies, which are Jen and Sophie? Yeah, I was at that one a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. I was so shocked. I, yeah, I, I've gotten emails from them. So I asked them to come to Sisters of Liberty and teach us. And, um, but I was shocked on how to vote. They said, because I had told I my- I had never heard that before. You it, too. That was the first time I'd ever heard that. So it was yeah. kind of, I don't know why we don't get that information out a little more widely to everybody. Exactly. Because I, I called my boys and made sure that they, you know, voted. And I said, do it same day. But I didn't know that they should have not filled it out and replaced it and did it. They went in person, but they had already filled it out and put it in the Dropbox, right? Yeah. And that's not safe. So yeah. I'm like, yeah, we've got to get that word out um, so that we can't, it can be more safe. So the three prongs of Mom for America or the, this on this slide, it's empower moms. And we're going to learn why. And then I'm, they're going to introduce the 12 lessons, but, and then promote liberty and raise patriots. And so the, the um, there is a declaration of mothers on that website and you can click on it. And um, it's the Declaration of Mothers is the standard and foundation for Moms for America and Moms March movement. And now we're doing like Mom Force is about school districts training us how to do that. Um, Mom Vote is like I said, to get connected, to know how to get involved in doing that. And to um, the, there should be information. Um, United Women's Forum, Don Bates also meets um, on Mondays if you're interested in that. And they or at least receiving their emails to know what's going on and how they um, do work with um, legislators. And um, if we can connect with all of our groups, we can you know, help empower each of us, right? Yeah, um, I've been kind of connecting with the Eagle Forum and the Liberty Forum going yes. to some of their, because they meet once a month and they usually have speakers that are connected to. Oh, I didn't know they Eagle. met once a month month because I, yeah. I the Eagle they, just, they, just, they meet on Wednesday mornings so you have to go to them instead of Sisters of Liberty but oh, um maybe that's why I did they know. meet down at the Provo Library and okay. they had I didn't I went whatever day before yesterday over to um, Colette's house but the month before in July, I went down to the Provo Library and they had a guy speak. Well, actually, they had two different people speak, but um, it, it's pretty interesting. They talked about specific aspects of different bills that were going through. And so yeah. you get a lot more. They're very I mean, they're totally and only focused on politics and what's going on. And yeah, that's good. Um, that's good to be involved in all so, those groups. I love Eagle Forum. Yeah. 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 And then hi, yeah, Michelle. I see just, a, another only, person's on. So Michelle. many hours in a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's only I'm so sorry, many hours. Say that again. Um, there's another um, uh, mom's Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Um, so yeah, there's there's oh, if just we can, yeah, if they're they're coming out um, because of the big fundraiser they had at Mar Lago, Moms for America, they have a lot of backing, and we have a new app, um, and they're going to try to connect all of the groups in every state so that we can just say say hey, this House bill number, this Senate bill number. Um, Oops, she just got off. <laughs> Was I not supposed to say hi? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, but we can all connect. Um, yeah. and we know what to do. And then are you part of, um, do you know about this, uh, Your Health Freedom, which is Kristen Chevrolet? So that there's a big conference coming oh. up with Kristen. Yes. My husband worked with her on Chris Harrod's campaign. Oh, good, good. She's wonderful. I love Kristen. So I, I, I definitely support her. And they're, they're bringing in people in October. I'm really sad. And what is the name of her group? The Health? Uh, Your Health Freedom, either .org or .com. Huh. 
Interesting. Yeah, Let and monsteramericas.us. So, okay. okay, all right. So the 12 lessons, the first one today is called Anchored in Hope. And then it goes, no place like home. I, she's going to explain this. I probably shouldn't explain. She's going to explain it in the video. video. And okay, that's the number if you want to text for national stuff. And um, because if, if, you know, if you want to, if you want to, you know, join in any way, a, a different way to join with us um, in, dip, like I said, there's the Kurt, uh, you know, the Kurt Cameron's um, award thing that's coming up in October. They'll have all of that on there, but the, the, that's the website. So what do I do? I just text that number and it puts me on their list. Is that no, what put, it does? Put that number on there. And I think you text moms. Let's go back to that website where it said that at the top. Yeah. Put mom, uh -huh. put moms. Yeah. And, and um, this website, they've really done a great job with Moms for America now. And, and, and they have, um, if you want to start your own in-person classes, that's the hostess portal. I am the Utah state liaison. And so um, if, if someone in another city in Utah starts their own in-home one or, or Zoom one even, they can, she'll tell me and then I can be of support for them. Um, and so in the meantime, I'm teaching as well. And then there's the Declaration of Mothers if you want to sign that. And there's all these different mom um, link groups, but okay. Here's the media podcast. There's a podcast um, that's done weekly and you can sign up for an email to, to get those if you want, or you can go on their, their channel, Mom Talks, Mom Watch. They have so much stuff I going see. on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if we go back to my slides, okay. So, um, Oh, I, was, I always like to read this. So when moms get together, we inspire each other. And Moms for America's signature project is the Cottage Meeting Seminar. That's the first 12. But then, like I say, if you go on that website, if you want to go ahead and do the 5,000-year leap, they have those already recorded. And then they have the Healing of America series. And they're going to start soon um, Cleon Skousen's other book called The Naked Communist and talks about the history of communism and, 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 and all of that. We studied that. Um, with Sister of Liberty too. It's a really good book. Um, okay, so this, what this is, is kind of like patriotic Bible study because we use the Bible. And when we come together to learn, share, and inspire each other, we study the gospel of liberty at the same time of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, when we're anchored in hope, we fill our homes with a sure foundation that all will be well with God and he will provide and that our country is unique in its constitution and it is a covenant land because it's based on God's law or natural law. Um, and, you know, the Magna Carta was the, the first document that our founders actually kind of used part, parts of that was based on natural law or God's law, right? In like 1200 something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if, if we will love and live the gospel of Jesus Christ, we will always find ways to help support freedom and to teach correct virtues and morals or principles so our country can be healed from all the division he wants us to be divided and he rewards efforts so we can armor up our children and they can learn to discern truth from error as general flynn has said local action promotes national impact so when you get liberty in your heart and god's words in your heart he will reveal answers and comfort to you it's like skipping a stone on a lake it ripples and amplifies so we can be part of the solution instead of just be you know like this is hopeless um I was so happy to find this group um, and be during when Obama became president because I just felt so uh, like I had no power. And then I, I just felt like going there and I, it was strengthening me and healing me. And then I um, was teaching principles to my kids. And then I started getting, you know, impressions to go, you know, I need to go down to the Capitol. I need to. And then I learned how to pull um, senators and house representatives out and, <laughs> and talk to them about the, the bills and, you know, started to get involved and everybody is going to be different. They might not do that in our group in that group since that was started. We've had people that do radio programs and podcasts. We have authors we have people who run for office um and so if but that but it really does start in the home if moms um can start in the home um i think it amplifies and and okay so here is that says hope for america okay if this works all right fellow americans this is the 34th time i'll speak to you from the oval office and the last we've been together eight years now and soon it'll be time for me to go but before i do I wanted to share some thoughts, some of which I've been saving for a long time. 
We the people tell the government what to do. It doesn't tell us. We the people are the driver. The government is the car. And we decide where it should go and by what route and how fast. Almost all the world's constitutions are documents in which governments tell the people what their privileges are. Our constitution is a document in which we the people tell the government what it is allowed to do. We the people are free. This belief has been the underlying basis for everything I've tried to do these past eight years. But back in the 1960s when I began, it seemed to me that we'd begun reversing the order of things. That through more and more rules and regulations and confiscatory taxes, the government was taking more of our money, more of our options, and more of our freedom. I went into politics in part to put up my hand and say, stop. I was a citizen politician, and it seemed the right thing for a citizen to do. I think we have stopped a lot of what needed stopping. And I hope we have once again reminded people that man is not free unless government is limited. There's a clear cause and effect here that is as neat and predictable as a law of physics. As government expands, liberty contracts. There is a great tradition of warnings in presidential farewells. And I've got one that's been on my mind for some time. But oddly enough, it starts with one of the things I'm proudest of in the past eight years. The resurgence of national pride that I called the new patriotism. This national feeling is good, but it won't count for much and it won't last unless it's grounded in thoughtfulness and knowledge. An informed patriotism is what we want. And are we doing a good enough job teaching our children what America is and what she represents in the long history of the world? And as for those who create the popular culture, well-grounded patriotism is no longer the style. Our spirit is back, but we haven't re-institutionalized it. We've got to do a better job of getting across that America is freedom. Freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of enterprise, and freedom is special and rare. It's fragile. It needs production. So we've got to teach history based not on what's in fashion, but what's important. Why the pilgrims came, who Jimmy Doolittle was, and what those 30 seconds over Tokyo meant. You know, four years ago, on the 40th anniversary of D-Day, I read a letter from a young woman writing to her late father, who had fought on Omaha Beach. Her name was Lisa Zanata N. And she said, we will always remember. We will never forget what the boys of Normandy did. Well, let's help her keep her word. If we forget what we did, we won't know who we are. I'm warning of an eradication of that, of the American memory that could result ultimately in an erosion of the American spirit. Let's start with some basics. More attention to American history and a greater emphasis on civic ritual. And let me offer lesson number one about America. All great change in America begins at the dinner table. So tomorrow night in the kitchen, I hope the talking begins. And children, if your parents haven't been teaching you what it means to be an American, let them know and nail them on it. That would be a very American thing to do. And so, Goodbye, God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. I thought that was such an amazing piece that I wanted to include that. And if you want to text your emails in the chat, then I can send you even this whole slideshow. I just keep adding to it the 12 lessons. And, and like I said, I'm going to teach the 12 virtues of American Forgotten Stories, too. But um, to introduce who I am, my name is Tammy Hirsch. I taught high school in Utah um, in, in uh, Alpine School District and Davis School District. And then I moved to California and taught high school there. And I taught high school English and Japanese and um, health, which includes sex ed. And that's how I, I ended up getting involved. Um, with what was what's going you know what the changes with that and then um, I taught dance 
Um, and when I moved to California, my, my good um, friend from Tennessee that had moved, she was teaching English and history and I was teaching English and health and Japanese. And she showed me that Abraham Lincoln in the textbook, this was, I was pregnant with my 27 year old, so 28 years ago now. And um, in the textbook, it showed that Abraham Lincoln was bisexual and he was a Democrat. And I was like, what? <laughs> he was the first Republican. <laughs> and, he, and who cares about what his sexuality is? And why are they saying that? You know, <laughs> it was so bizarre to me. But then when I taught sex ed in Utah, our curriculum was abstinence-based, science-based. We, we actually taught um, you know, I usually would put up, a, you know, a slide of, you know, the actual body parts start with the male, move in from the, sp the sperm into the female and then, and, and show um, the development of a, of, of a baby. And, and we did a lots of different things than what comprehensive sex ed was. And we had a meeting, a parent meeting where the parents were told what we were going to teach and then they could opt out or they could go to the library. Um, and, um, in California, they didn't have that. My textbook was pushing same sex um, stuff and, and, you know, experiment, experiment with that first before opposite sex. And I was like really shocked. And I wondered if parents knew that, that things are so backwards in California. Um, and, and so when I did give birth to my child, um, my oldest, I decided to um, homeschool. And I never thought I would do that because I love education. I love learning. I, I'm a person that believes in lifelong learning. Um, and I ended up having four boys there. And then we moved to Texas for a little while. And then we came to Utah and I had my daughter here. And um, so that's who I am. And so part of with Moms for America, when I started with Sisters of Liberty first, I, I, I really did started, I started to learn how to pull people out um, up at the Capitol. And then when they were trying to push, this is 2009 even, they were trying to push, um, we just first started changing with Common Core with our, our math. Then we, um, I knew then, I looked up the national sexuality standards and saw um, what was going on there and started the fight. And I actually have a slideshow. If you want that slideshow, that um, includes all that research with comprehensive sex ed and how it's been taken over and how it's pushing all the different genders. And, and it's, it's in some states, they've had it from kindergarten up. Uh, Senator King, who was trying to push this crap, um, it wanted third grade enough where, where kids could change their sex without their parents, you know. And now, now look at 2022, it's, it's even worse. Um, and they were able to sneak it in when I was up there testifying. They stuck it in the laws of a smart bill to change sex ed um, under the guise of bullying. Um, but it's, it's bad. And we need to, you know, within each um, local school district within Utah, you need to go and, and find out what they're teaching, which books they're using for that. Um, because it's, it's really bad. It's based on um, a guy who literally got grants to rape babies and, and say they're sexual beings from the moment they're born till you die. And, and, and it's, it's sexualizing children. It's really bad. Um, uh, so I, this is a little bit, to, this is a short, short one about just to introduce um, Kimberly Fletcher, the president and the CEO. The hand that rocks the cradle isn't just a cute little saying, it's an immortalized fact. The mothers of a nation mold its citizens, develop its character, shape its destiny. The great and noble characters who left their immortal imprint on our nation's history were not fashioned on battlefields or in palaces, but in the cradle and at the fireside. Home is where liberty begins. We cannot expect to have a nation of patriots who love liberty and respect the Constitution if we are not raising these patriots in our homes. While others will try to convince us that the most important things we can do to save America and preserve liberty are outside our homes, we know it is what we do inside our home that has the greatest influence on our nation. The greatest act of patriotism a mother can ever perform will be within the walls of her own home. We don't need more government. We need more women of virtue, women of faith who will cultivate a foundation of faith in the hearts of her children, women of courage who will be ambassadors of truth, who will defend and protect the family at all costs, 
We need women infused with patriotism who will teach and nurture the principles of liberty and virtue our nation was founded on. Women who will foster a deep love and respect for our beloved America and all she stands for. We need an army of mothers who will raise a nation of patriots. That is how we will save our beloved America, by growing stronger citizens, citizens who cannot be oppressed, who are capable of facing tough challenges, citizens who are still in love with liberty, know its cost, and are willing to pay the price. America will stand because America is bigger than a government. It is American families united in purpose, filled with the spirit of freedom. It is the spirit of the people that makes America free. The plane full of patriots that went down in a Pennsylvania field. The firefighters who walked into a crumbling building when everyone else was running out. The men and women sleeping in tents in 100 degree heat in Iraq and Afghanistan. It is the mothers teaching their children, the small business owners fighting for their dream, and the children who place their hands over their hearts to pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Liberty begins at home, and there's no place like home to restore hope in America. As mothers, we have a divine inherent right to protect, nurture, and secure the blessings of liberty for ourselves and our children. Hope for America is reflected in our vision of the future. You and I, we hold the keys. We are the keepers of the flame. We must do everything in our power to pass on that flame, make sure it burns bright, and that it continues to be a light on the hill and a beacon of hope to the world. We are the hope of America. We are the last line of defense between freedom and servitude. What we know and what we nurture in the hearts of our children will literally determine the fate of the free world. We can no longer stand on the sidelines. The future of America is in our hands. There is hope for America, and it is you. I am so inspired by Kimberly, and I absolutely believe that to be true, that it is, it, it is us, and it's time for us to, to learn, and, and, and that's what Moms for America does, is it empowers, it empowers women, and so these are our three things right here, okay, I'll go back, empowers moms, promote liberty, and raise patriots, and so um, I'm so thankful that that Kimberly was able to, you know, you know, get this started way back in 2004, and now it's a half a million people, and it's spreading. And we've got, you know, state liaisons in all the states, and and then we've got, you know, cottage meetings that are popping up all over to be able to start doing this. So here is the introduction with Jolene Jackson. She um, now lives near DC, and she is the the vice president of um, education. Welcome to our virtual cottage meeting, presentation number one, Anchored in Hope. I'm Julene Jackson, the National Vice President for Moms for America over Cottage Meetings. Our premise is that liberty begins at home, where moms gather in small groups, in homes, parks, churches, wherever, meeting once a month, maybe once a week, whatever your cottage meeting decides, to study principles of liberty and freedom and learn the great stories and miracles of America. As mamas learn, it will be the most natural thing to want to turn and to teach her children and her grandchildren the things that she's learning. When a mother understands the Constitution and reverences our founding fathers and mothers, so will her posterity. When mama knows, her children know. If we aren't teaching them these things, who will? I have attended or taught cottage meetings for over a decade, and I have seen firsthand the difference cottage meetings have made in my home, within my marriage, and how I teach my children. I've birthed seven babes, 
two little sons lost in infancy and five very wild and alive children here on earth. I've got a daughter who's a working professional married girl. I've got a son who's a professional athlete, another girl in college, a boy in high school and the baby girl in middle school. My husband and I have been married whew, over almost 30 years. And I have to say, it's exhausting work raising the next generation of patriots in today's world. To be honest with you, it was me, the mama, who first woke up to what my children, what our children were being exposed to in the schools and by their peers and through different forms of media. I like to say I had to gently put my foot in my husband's behind, wake him up. It took a year or so, but now we eventually got into lockstep. And so, you know, I say, moms, be patient with your husbands. These dads, they eventually come around. If you need to, pray over them and just be a quiet force and example for him. And over time, you know, he'll come around. We're going to talk a little bit more about our men through the series. As you begin your discussion of Anchored in Hope today, you might choose to stop the video after every question uh, that I'll ask, or you can listen to the entire presentation and then review the questions at the end. We usually have about four to six discussion questions with each lesson. So as I'm speaking and ideas come to you, feel free to take notes in your manual. And most of all, I'd like to encourage you all as you begin your discussion period, introduce everyone, Tell a little bit about yourself, maybe how many children you have, how many grandchildren you have or don't have, and what specifically has brought you here today. So this cottage meeting resource guide will be a great tool and manual to teach each other from. It includes each of the 12 lessons and all the supplemental material that I will reference for each class. It's also a valuable book to teach your children and your grandchildren from. You know, I've used this guide for years. I would pull it on my uh, pajama clad lap early in the morning and teach from it in our early morning family devotional. It's packed full of stories and articles and suggested books to study uh, or to read to your children, your teenagers, your young children. It has quotes video links, scriptures, all to help teach the love of liberty to your kids. You can purchase this manual from Moms for America store on our website at momsforamerica.us. If you turn to the table of contents in the beginning of the manual, you'll see that it shows where you can find all the what, whens, whys, and hows of a cottage meeting. And I would really recommend reading this part so everyone is kind of on the same page. It also includes the 12 introductory lessons. The first that we'll discuss today is Anchored in Hope. The next lesson is There's No Place Like Home, which talks about the importance of the work that we do within the four walls of our home. Uh, lesson number three is Ladies First. You educate the women and the men will be educated. There's a lesson on the foundation of faith, the valor of virtue, the power of patriotism, those three things make up the three pillars of liberty that we call the faith, virtue, and patriotism. We've got another lesson, lesson number seven, America, share the story, teaching through stories. Lesson eight, capture the sunshine, how we teach the love of liberty through literature, art, music, and poetry. A time to sow, which talks about the power of the dinner hour eating together, the wheat and the chaff, which is how we teach our children the constitution, the law of the harvest, which teaches children to love to work, to be self-reliant, and lastly, raising the next generation of patriots. The Cottage Meeting Project is a simple program with profound results because it focuses on the home and it begins with the very heart of America, the woman. The hand that rocks the cradle isn't just a cute saying. It's an indisputable fact. The mothers of a country mold its citizens, determine its institutions, and shape its destinies. There is no person that has greater influence on society than a mother, and there is no place that has greater influence than the home. That is why the cottage meeting is so successful in creating a foundation of liberty. It begins with women, and it is centered in the home. 
We know from our experience that as you participate in this program, you will gain a wealth of knowledge and understanding that will infuse you with hope and inspire you with direction. I know this firsthand. 13 years ago, we moved to a small town along the Columbia Gorge in Oregon. Our five kids' ages were high school on down to toddler. Now, some of the mamas in town began to get concerned about what the middle school and high schoolers were being taught in school. A mom in town one day was watching a program with Glenn Beck, and he held up the book, The 5,000 Year Leap. And he said, moms, you need to start study groups, study these principles, and then go home and teach them to your children. So that's exactly what we did. We started a, a cottage meeting, if you will, a small group of moms, about six or seven of us. We met once a month in one of the homes, and we would study a few principles from that 5,000 year lead book. And then inevitably, we came home and we taught our children. Some of the moms taught their kids at the dinner table, some before bedtime. I taught these principles of liberty in our family morning devotional. You know, this is how my mom taught us children in a little gathering where she'd bring us together and we'd read the Bible and sing a song and pray. So it was a natural thing for me to do this with our children. But I began to weave in some of these principles of liberty. We knew. We knew mamas knew that it was making a difference in our homes. We could see it. We could feel it. So a few years later, I moved to Utah and I started another cottage meeting in my new neighborhood. And those moms, they wanted to meet every week. The changes that began to happen in our homes, in our marriages, our schools, our communities, even at the state level, it was remarkable. These women are still meeting today, and they are called the Sisters of Liberty. I mean, if you have to start a group, give yourself a fun name. Those girls have gone on to write books, to host radio shows, to run for office, to hold office, homeschool, their community leaders, they speak out in the uh, community, they're activists. It seems like every candidate running for office in this community, whether it be a school board member or a member of the state legislature, or even gubernatorial candidates or congressional candidates have wanted to come speak to this group of mothers, these sisters of liberty. And I've seen it oftentimes a candidate will come and speak and we'll send them home with a pocketbook of the constitution or a 5,000 year leap because they just didn't seem to be that steeped in the founder's wisdom as they should have been. The relationships you establish through the cottage meetings will provide comfort and strength as you shore each other up and learn and grow together. I'm still dear friends with those ladies meeting in those cottage meetings in those two groups in Oregon and Utah that I attended, even though we moved back east years ago. We are seeing cottage meetings forming throughout the nation we moms will strengthen our communities and create networks of freedom and virtue as we gather together to learn. The Delphian Society said 10 small discussion groups in the community will do more to create a new way of life than 100 mass meetings with 1,000 in attendance at each. As these pockets of liberty emerge all across America, you will see how one woman in one home, one cottage meeting at a time can heal our hearts, can heal homes and communities in this land that we love. So mamas, don't fret. The spirit of America is alive. It thunders in the homes all across this nation. There is hope for America. It is the hope that swells within our own hearts. It is our vision for the future. We are the hope of America and liberty begins with us. Make no mistake, we are in a battle right now. And as mothers, we feel every day we're losing battles. God knew this. He just wants to know that we're willing to fight, to get on that wall and to do something, to stand up and to push back if we need to. So the question is, what are some of the battles that you're fighting right now in your homes, within your schools and your communities? Perhaps our job is not necessarily to win this fight, but to prepare the ground, to make the soil fertile and sow the seeds so that liberty may thrive when the battle is done. So how do we do this? Mary Lyon, the American pioneer in women's education said, educate the women and the men will be educated. 
Let the ladies understand the doctrine of seeking the greatest good, of loving neighbor as themselves. Let them indoctrinate their children in fundamental truth and we shall have wise legislation. In your cottage meeting, you will become educated in principles of faith, virtue, patriotism, the proper role of government and constitutional principles. As we turn to our first lesson, Anchored in Hope, we will remember that if it is important to mama, it will be important to everyone in your home. If mom is anchored in hope, so will her family. So to begin today, I would love to recommend a wonderful four minute video entitled Hope of America that reminds us that the destroyers of freedom are real. They know that what we do in the four walls of our home will be the greatest acts of patriotism we will ever perform. So they wanna marginalize mother and certainly discourage you. After you watch the Hope of America video, you might wanna discuss why is hope such a powerful attribute to cultivate today? What does hope look like to you? How does it feel? What does hopefulness sound like? We know the true and sure source of hope. It comes from God. Let's look and see as we study some of these Bible verses, how we could qualify for help from God. Now, every lesson is going to include some Bible verses. One mom could look up all the verses and share the scriptures as an assignment or each mom could take a verse and then you could share and discuss after our discussion today. So let's look at these five verses. The first one is 2 Chronicles 7 14 where it talks about we need to pray and we need to seek his face and humble ourselves and repent and turn from our wicked ways. You know when I think of a mama's wicked ways, when I think of my wicked ways, sometimes it's just I'm tired, I'm lazy, I'm I'm uninformed, I'm apathetic. But if we will turn from those tendencies, the promise is God will heal our land. You know, this verse right here is one of my favorite go-to liberty scriptures these days. As so many people are despondent, this is the formula for hope and for healing. In Isaiah 61.1, it talks about how God came to proclaim liberty to the captives. What does that look like to proclaim liberty? In 1 Corinthians 9.10, it talks about being a partaker of hope. What does that look like to you, mom? In 2 Corinthians 3.17, we're told where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And in Galatians 5, verses 1, stand fast in liberty. Christ has made you free. So what do you like about these verses? And why do you think God loves liberty? And do these verses, do they fill you with greater hope and vision? I would highly recommend reading the first chapter of Raising the Next Generation of Patriots. It talks about stories from history of women and mothers influencing nations and great leaders. Chapter one, entitled Mothers, Master Gardeners, tells about St. Patrick coming to Ireland in 431 AD. He wanted to convert Ireland to Christianity, but instead of going to the tribal leaders, he went to the mamas on the rivers and around the campfires because he knew if you could convert the mother, he could convert Ireland. George Washington said he was most influenced by his mother. She was the most beautiful woman I ever saw, he said. They sometimes were at odds with each other, but he lovingly would call her his reverend mother. All that I am, I owe to her, he said. There's a great story in the real George Washington about how his mother, Mary Ball Washington, convinced him not to join the Royal British Navy as a teenager. He was all set. His bags were packed. He said that she used earnest solicitations to prevent him from going. Now, I just had to laugh when I read that. I mean, haven't some of us had to use very strong solicitations with some of our kids? ranting and raving and pleading and begging and weeping and welling. I mean, I'm sure you haven't, but uh, unfortunately, I've had to be a little earnest with some of my solicitations through the years. Imagine how the course of America would have been different if young George had gone off to the British Navy. Thank goodness for his inspired mother's solicitations. Napoleon Bonaparte, the French emperor and commander during the French Revolution and beyond said, let France have good mothers and she will have good sons. 
In chapter one of Raising the Next Generation of Patriots, we are told that when God wants to change the world, he sends a baby into a simple home to an obscure mother. Then he puts an idea into the mama's heart and she puts it into the baby's mind. These beautiful teachings. And then God waits. The greatest forces are not earthquakes or thunderbolts or congresses, but they are babies. Mothers train and teach and shape characters and help to form nations and save nations. We are the master gardeners. We're the mother of all living, as it talks about in Genesis. What does that mean to be a mother of all living? What were some of the things that your mother did to instill God and the love of family and patriotism into you? What influence did your mother or mothers in history have in preserving liberty and virtue or faith? In the supplemental material in our lesson today, there is an article entitled Anchored in Hope. It tells of the story of a man in a fishing boat on the great Mississippi River. The part of the river wanders through the city of Minneapolis, where the water travels through a series of rapids and falls. To accommodate these travelers, there's a lock system that's been built to safely bring the boats to a lower water level. And there's actually an observation deck that's been built for those who like to watch the locks fill with water and receive a boat and then drain the water and let it out on the other side. One day, the observers witnessed something out of the ordinary. A gentleman in a fishing boat had missed the turn for the locks and got caught in a current that was swiftly taking him away towards the fall. The people watched terrified, wondering what they could do. As the boat approached the falls, somehow it got lodged between two rocks and time was suspended as the boat tilted at a severe angle on the brink of the fall. The man was left with a view of the rushing waters all around him and a perfect view of his impending doom. Fears were raging, but everyone could see that a panic response could result in sudden movements and could easily dislodge the boat and send it over the falls. Miraculously, the helicopter was brought in. A rescue worker secured himself to a harness and a cable where he was lowered down out of the helicopter to the boat to retrieve the man and to lift him to safety. To help the man remain calm and to understand his role in this rescue effort, other workers were involved in talking to him over a loudspeaker. They spoke of hope and reassurance as they redirected his thinking from the water rushing about him to the helicopter and the rescue worker above. Directions were given with clarity and optimism. The man focused his attention on what he needed to do. The rescue workers showed their courage and skill as they carefully lifted him to safety. Now the question might ask, be asked, what do you like about this story? What role do we play in the rescue today with our loved ones? Hope is a belief, a confidence that future events are attainable. It is a powerful energy that keeps us moving despite obstacles in our way. Hope anchors us during winds of adversity and is the antidote for discouragement and despair. Mamas, we are bombarded with fear and concern for the future of our children and our grandchildren. How can we speak of solutions and reassurance to re redirect our loved ones from fear or panic? There are four things that we can do that will help us and ultimately help our loved ones say, stay anchored in hope. These four things are, number one, look to God for freedom, not government or Washington, D.C. Look upward for our solutions for deliverance and healing and teach our children to look to God when they need help. I grew up in a home where my mama led her brood of nine children, nine of us in this daily devotional like I talked to you about. We'd read a little verse, we'd sing a song and pray. So that's what I did with my kids. Pull your kids together. Read a Bible story with them over breakfast, over dinner, before you put them to bed at night, and then talk about, well, what is the moral of this story that we just read? How does it apply to you when you go to school tomorrow? Pray with them morning and night. Teach them when good things happen, you thank God. When there's a problem in your life, you go to him for help, and it will become start to become a natural thing for them to want to turn to the Lord. I have a boy who's a professional athlete. And when he took that jump from high school to college, he went to Duke. 
And he learned that one of the games that they were going to play was against the University of North Carolina. Apparently, that's a really big rivalry. And he learned that millions of people would be watching this game on television. And when he learned that, he got really nervous. And he said, Mom, before I went to the gym that day, I got down on my knees in my Duke dorm room. And I asked God to please help me play the way that I knew that I could, that I hoped I could. He went out and had a great game. He told me this after the game. And through the years, he's told me these stories, especially when he was a rookie. His first year, he was drafted in the, into the NBA after a year at Duke. And that first year was tough for him. And he says, I got down on my knees on some of the dirtiest bathroom stalls in the greatest arenas in America. And I would pray before these games when I was about to go up against the likes of a LeBron James or a Harden or a Curry. But he learned in the home that when you're worried or you're nervous or you're scared, you turn to God. That is best taught in the home. And then they go out in the world and they apply these patterns and these habits that you formed with them. Number two, make family time a high priority. And I'm not necessarily talking about more recreation, shopping or movies. Take time to teach them the things that will armor them up the best when they have to go out in the world. I think that is why I felt our morning devotionals was really some of the most sacred time I had with the kids, where we would share with them the things that we felt was most important before we got them off for the day. I kind of felt it was like their armor. Mamas, don't outsource the raising of your children to the schools or universities or social media. You will be the best teacher your child will ever have. You are the most qualified to prepare them to go out in the world and to be good and to do good. Number three, look to the Constitution from the viewpoint of the founding fathers. The biblical prophet Hosea said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We can't let that happen. The United States became a great nation by following correct principles, and she will remain great as we hold fast to the truth. So we study and we learn for ourselves what is in the Constitution. Those seven articles and 27 amendments what do they mean to us as mothers? We have lesson number 10 called the wheat and the chaff, where you learn how to teach the highlights of the Constitution to your children. Moms for America actually teaches a 16-week Healing of America seminar. One hour a week, it's free. Just register on our website. Four of those 16 weeks are dedicated solely to teaching the Constitution, where we learn and study together parts that are most applicable to our rights and freedoms today as a mother who's trying to protect her children. We learn what the founding fathers intended and how the constitution has been misinterpreted or changed by uninspired amendments in, in the 1900s and what we can do to restore and repair it. In addition to learning the constitution from those that gave it to us, we must also teach our children the spiritual roots of this nation, the great stories and miracles of America. In lesson number seven, entitled Share the Story, we're going to learn how to teach these stories, these patriotic stories to our children. The lesson is just chuck full of some of the best stories to teach your children what courage and what faith and what patriotism looks like. You know, I had a daughter, our oldest daughter, Kayla, who served a church mission on the Amazon River in Iquitos, Peru, and it was hard. And she will say, mom, there were times that I just wanted to go home. It was, it was tough. There was, you know, you couldn't drive a car. It was dusty roads. There was rats in their apartments, lice, dengue fever. But she said, I remember in those early morning devotionals, we have a big picture of Mount Vernon on our mantle. Either you or dad, at least once a week, would point to that picture and say, look, George Washington, do you think he wanted to fight eight years in a miserable revolutionary war and then another eight years leading the country? He longed for the ease of the way in his home on the Potomac of Mount Vernon. But because he stayed the course, it made all the difference to this nation and to you and I. And she said, I remember that story. And I thought, you know, I know if I just stay the course on this mission, as she went and she taught the gospel of Jesus Christ to the impoverished people in Peru, it might just make a difference to someone. And it most certainly made a difference to her. So instead of our kids shrinking when things get tough, these stories teach them to be strong and to be gritty 
and to stay the course. In our family devotional in the morning, I would teach a principle of liberty a week from the 5,000 year leave. And then we would actually review the headlines from a couple newspapers that we would get that would come to the house. And we would see if what was being reported in the headlines was consistent with what our founding fathers intended. So what it did is it helped to give the kids a practical application of the principle. Now, I still do this today, even though we're down to just one kid in that morning devotional. We're going to talk more about the 5,000 year lead book, this book that contains 28 principles of liberty that our founding fathers said must be understood and perpetuated by all those that desire peace, prosperity, and freedom. You know, adherence to these principles brought about more progress than was made in the previous 5,000 years. We went from the plow and the horse to the man on the moon in about 200 years. I would recommend reading the introduction to this book this week if you get a chance. So be thinking about ways that you are or could teach your children the stories of America and principles of liberty. Okay, so let's recap. How do we stay anchored in hope? Number one, we look to God for our freedoms, not government. Number two, make family time a high priority. Number three, learn the constitution from the viewpoint of the founding fathers. Now, if you do those three things, you will know what to do for number four. And that is do something, start a group, join a group, participate in an online cottage meeting or attend in person, support a good candidate, run for office, get involved. Maybe you could testify before the school board or just attend the school board or city council meeting. Maybe you need to start within your home, begin to have a daily devotional or to pray with your children. Or maybe you just need to repair a relationship in your family that needs mending. When mamas anchor themselves in these four things, these principles and these practices will begin to engender hope within you and your family will follow suit and you will become a mighty force in this battle for liberty. Your fears will become transformed to faith your apathy will turn into resolve and despair will be converted to hope. And you will realize there's no place like home to restore hope in America. Kimberly Fletcher, the founder and president of Moms for America knew this so well. In the supplemental material, she wrote an article entitled Coming Full Circle, where she tells how her husband was serving in the military and was in the Pentagon when it was attacked on 9-11. She realized freedom was not free and she needed to do something to ensure these same freedoms for her children and grandchildren. Now, Kimberly was deeply concerned for our country and the direction that we were heading as we all were at that time. You know, at first she thought the best way to solve or fix the problems of America was maybe to give women a platform where they could voice their values. So she spent months and months trying to get a program on Fox. And she even got the attention of the heads of the studios. But ultimately she would learn. They just weren't interested what moms thought. And so then she thought, well, maybe public policy needs to be where we can exact some change. So she met with state leaders and legislators and even members of Congress. And all she got was uh, smiles and pats from them. And then she thought, well, let's see, maybe we just need to get better people in office. So she volunteered on campaigns and helped with voter registrations, which is not a bad thing. I mean, they won some elections, they lost some elections. And then it hit her. The place where she could have the greatest impact on our nation is the place where she has always been, in her home. The problem wasn't with Congress or candidates or the media or even government. I mean, look, they all need improving. But the problem was that liberty is homegrown and not enough people were growing it. We have outsourced the love of liberty and freedom to schools and churches and universities and the internet. Liberty doesn't begin in Congress, it begins at home. Everything outside of the home is a resource for the family, not a replacement. Winston Churchill said, there is no doubt that it is around the family and the home that all of the greatest virtues, the most dominating virtues of human society are created and strengthened and maintained. 
So Kimberly realized we couldn't preserve liberty and change the course of our nation if we don't start with our own heart and in our own home because we're raising the future leaders, future teachers, reporters, policymakers, police, judges. How can we expect liberty and virtue to prevail with them if we don't start with them in the home? So she founded Moms for America in 2004, redirecting her efforts to the place where we as women have the greatest impact, our homes. She truly came full circle. It's been said that light must come from inside. You cannot ask the darkness to leave. You must turn on the light. Moms, how can we be the light in the darkness and the anchor in our homes and in our neighborhoods? Okay, mamas, now's the time to conclude the video portion of our class. So if you haven't already introduced yourself, now might be a good time. I hope the spirit will be with you as you discuss ways in which you can stay anchored in hope and become a part of the solution as we work together to secure the blessings of liberty for ourselves and our posterity. Let's reflect again on the discussion questions. Number one, what are some of the battles that you're having right now? What are you fighting for in your homes, in your schools, in your communities? Number two, after you watch the Hope of America video, you might want to discuss why is hope such a powerful attribute and how do we cultivate it? What does hope look like to you? How does it feel? How does it sound? Number three, what did you like about the Bible verses? Why do you think God loves liberty? And do these verses fill you with greater hope and vision as you ponder on them? And number four, what are some of the things that your mother did to instill the love of God and family and patriotism in you? What influence did your mother or mothers throughout history, what influence have they had in preserving liberty and virtue and faith? And what are you doing to teach these things to your children? And five, what about that story on the Mississippi with the locks and the boat rescue? What is our role? What, what role do we play in the rescue today with our loved ones and in our schools and communities and our country? And number six, mom, how are we the light in the darkness? How are we an anchor in our homes and in our neighborhoods? Till next time, mamas, staying anchored in hope. God bless. Bye for now. Um, can you guys all hear me now? Um, that was just so beautiful and just love Jolene. So this is the website, momsforamerica.us for those that have just joined us. I know we have more people now. And um, I was just gonna go back up and show you the actual website. And if you go up to the top where it says virtual meetings, then you can go down and click on the cottage meetings. Then this opens up. So you, if you can't purchase the book, then you can, go and um, do it this way. Let me see, how do I increase myself so you can kind of see me? I don't know if you can see me. Some things happen where you can't see me. <laughs> um, but we have a new book and they have in the new book of the cottage meetings, they, they give um, help with teaching your children and which books to use that are kid friendly. But if you look and you click on the resource guide, you can see, you can read articles that are in the book, like 45 Communist Goals. This video with Dr. Ben Carson um, uh, at the National Prayer was just so amazing um, to watch. Um, and then you can, if you go at the top, this is where you go through the virtual meetings, you can click on those Healing of American series right there, and then the 5,000 Year Elite series. And then what's coming up that, Jillian and Ella are planning to teach or the, the Naked Communists is coming up next. And then you can get informed with um, all different kinds of um, action groups like Mom Forces with School Boards teaching you how what to do and, and how to um, talk, uh, uh, just, just tips to be able to go to a school board and be able to speak. Um, and also Mom Vote to connect and each state is connecting. Um, and they've got a, a new app, a Moms for America app that they're hoping to connect all of 
the groups in each state. So like, you know, we have so many different groups in Utah that we can all connect together, like the United Women's Forum and, and the Eagle Forum, um, Your Health Freedom Forum, all of uh, Utah's against common, Utah parents against Common Core, United Parents, and we can all get together and we can, you know, discuss. And, and I think that brings more hope to me. I know, for me in 2008, when Obama came on the scene and they started changing the schools since I was a high school teacher and brought in Common Core, um, that's when I decided I had to, you know, I, but I was really into a lot of despair because I saw how much, and I started researching how he had changed what was gonna come in. And I knew that that, that comprehensive sex ed was coming in. And, um, and then actually in my one daughter's second grade class, they changed, um, I love Edie Hirsch's books. When I homeschooled, I use those like what your kindergartner should know. And even if you're a grandma, those books are so good. You could read those stories out of there, what your first grader should know and a second grader. Well, that school my daughter had gone to um, had got common coreized it. And it was the last month of that school year. And she came home and said, white people were bad. And I was like, what? And this is here in Utah. And this was, she's now in eighth grade the coming this year so it was a long time ago and I went and, and I got the book uh talked to the teacher and she's like well I have to teach from this book and I'm like yeah but that's not real it's not true why would you say that I wouldn't teach it if I were a school teacher and um that's when I saw they had like it was either 16 or 18 pages of um Islam in there um and it was it, it completely was horrific and I decided then I would pull her and and homeschool her and now she's in a um, Lehona Preparatory Academy, but, um, so there's, uh, there's one thing that I guess you can't see this. This one's Hebrews 6, 19, cause I can't see myself. So I can't show you on the camera. It says, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. Um, so I, I believe that now that when, when I started attending Sisters of Liberty is when I started learning these things. And, I began to, you know, be anchored in hope, and and then it filled my heart that I needed to get active, even though I never wanted to be active and and um, be part of the solution. So um, I was going to teach next uh, from this book right here, "Forgotten American Stories Celebrating America's Constitution." But before I move on, does anybody want to? Um, Say anything about any of those discussion questions about hope or this, you know, being part of the solution or, or anything right now or being involved. Um, Tammy, this is Marilyn. Um, I think that Michelle person left. I don't know if you noticed in the chat that she, it looks like she wants to connect into Arizona. So you might be able to go oh, back okay. somehow and figure out how to get her connected to somebody in Arizona. It sounds oh, like I that's sure where can. she lives. Okay, then I can do that. Yeah, I can definitely lead her to who the person is in Arizona. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm interested, I in the interest of time, um, yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, it's hard. Weekly is very hard for me. My preference would be to do something like once a month is much easier for me. So that's just my, yeah. um, you know, who I am. But um, anyway, that's my comments. Okay. Anybody else? I know that I thought I saw there was seven people. Um, okay. So this, um, uh, Lydia Wallace Nettle is the, author of this and she did give me permission when I actually got to meet her in person. She's amazing. Um, and she said I could teach this. So I teach from it and, and take slides from her book. So um, George Washington said a primary object should be the education of our youth in the science of government. In a republic, what species of knowledge can be equally important and what duty more pressing than communicating it to those who are to be the future guardians of the liberties of the country. And so the first chapter is about um, the Star Sting Spangled Banner. And the reason why I wanted to share one story with each of the 12 stories is in this book, there's 12 stories. And they also connect to a virtue. So faith, virtue, and patriotism are the three pillars that, that Jolene just talked about. And so I wanted to point out which virtues that our, our founders, or even like if we go back to our pioneers or whatever um, people 
on the Oregon Trail, you know, you know, expanding into America, what kind of virtues did they hold in their heart? Um, so uh, Francis Scott Key, the virtue that he held um, was courage. Um, and this is the story. So uh, in 1812, 25 years after the American Constitution was written, Congress declared war against Great Britain because Britain was interfering with American international trade and forcing captured American soldiers at sea to serve in the British Navy. In August of 1814, the British invaded and captured Washington, D.C. They set fire to numerous public buildings invading the Capitol and the president's mansion, the White House. The flames were visible 40 miles away in Baltimore. Severe thunderstorms and a tornado accompanied by torrential rains dampened the fires and kept them from spreading. The British left Washington and began preparing for a land and sea assault on Baltimore, America's third largest city. A respected young lawyer named Francis Scott Key had received word that a much loved town physician and a patriot, Dr. William Beans, had been captured by the British and was being held prisoner on a British flagship. President James Madison, who had taken notes on the Constitution Convention proceedings in 1787, gave Francis permission to arrange a prisoner exchange with the British and to fly a white flag of truce while attempting to find Dr. Beans on the enemy ship somewhere in the Chesapeake Bay. Francis was accompanied by Colonel John Skinner. They found the British ship holding Dr. Bean's prisoner and were successful in obtaining Dr. Bean's release. However, the British chose to keep Francis and Colonel Skinner underground or on, on, on board a true ship until the conclusion of the battle to ensure they would not divulge their plans for attacking Baltimore. Hence, the two men were later eyewitnesses of the 25-hour bombardment of Fort McHenry. Meanwhile, the citizens of Baltimore were preparing for the attack. They dug trenches and built ramparts, which are protective barriers around the city. The militia, the militia, although inexperienced, was on call. At Fort McHenry, 1,000 men under Major George Armstead had stacked sandbags around the powder magazine, which is a storage area for gunpowder, and had sunk numerous small ships or barges in the river to slow up the approach of enemy ships. As the pending British attack coincided with heavy rainstorm, the smaller of the two bold new American flags, the storm flag, was flying over the fort. At 6.30 a.m. on September 13, 1814, the British bombardment at Fort McHenry began. Cannons fired bombshells that often prematurely exploded overhead and rained down flaming chaparral, sharpnel. From special small boats, the British fired rockets that shrieked through the air, leaving trails of fiery red glare as they arched across the night sky, bursting into flame wherever they, they are, wherever they struck. In one account, the deafening noise of the explosions and the thick arid smoke forced Francis and Colonel Skinner to seek shelter below deck. From that limited vantage point, one can only imagine their thoughts and deep concern for their country. Throughout the rainy and smoke-filled night, they viewed the battle and saw our flag waving over Fort McHenry as it was sporadically illuminated by exploding bombs. On dawn of September 14th, the British gave up hope of taking the city and the British commander ordered an end to the bombardment. The British began to retreat. Questioning the cause of the silence, Francis and Colonel Skinner hoped for a sign that the city and our nation had been saved. Whose flag was raised above the fort? Was there a flag of surrender or our own stars and stripes? As the rainstorm had ended, Major Armstead ordered his men at Fort McHenry to replace the storm flag with a larger garrison flag, our Star Spangled Banner. To celebrate their victory, the troops fired their guns and played Yankee Doodle as they raised our flag. The Star Spangled Banner was so large that Francis and Colonel Skinner could see it proudly waving over the fort from their ship anchored eight miles down the river. Relieved and inspired by the sight, Francis captured his feelings of joy and gratitude on the back of a letter he had in his pocket. In 1931, the words of his poem became our official national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. I just loved <laughs> to read that story because I didn't know the story about it. So that's why I think it's so important to, to review our American stories. So in the third and the fourth verses, in God is our trust. Um, what do the third and fourth verses of the Star Spangled Banner say? And where is that band who so valiantly swore that the havoc of war and the battle's confusion, a home and a country shall leave us no more. Their blood has washed out their foul footsteps pollution. No refuge could save the hireling and slave from the terror of flight or the gloom of the grave. 
and the Star Spangled Banner in triumph doth wave over the land of the free and the home of the brave. Oh, thus be it ever when free men shall stand between their loved home and the war's desolation. Blessed with victory and peace, may the heaven rescued land praise the power that hath made and preserved us a nation. Then conquer we must when our cause it is just and thus be our motto, in God is our trust. And the star spangled banner in triumph shall wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave. Francis Scott Key, 1779 to 1843. So in this story is telling what courage was. He wanted to go help save his doctor friend, Dr. Beams. And um, this under the points to ponder, it says during the battle of Bladensburg, a town near Washington, DC, Dr. Beams showed compassion. There's another virtue that he had towards the British soldiers and he helped take care of their wounds. According to one account, when this knowledge was brought to the attention of the British leaders who held Dr. Beans hostage on their prison ship, they were more favorable toward Francis Scott Key's request for Dr. Beans to be set free. So, I mean, it took courage and it took compassion um, for, for this to unfold. And I think it's really important for us to continue to try to um, emulate those same kind of um, virtues right now as we, I kind of think it's an inner informational war, you know, like the work that's going on. Um, so the United States shall guarantee to every state in this union, a Republican form of government. Um, and so that's the US constitution article four, section four. And what I like about this first um, little story is that she includes, um, the writer includes that we have a three pronged um, combination of these elements of democracy, representation and a constitution. Um, before I attended classes with Sisters of Liberty, I thought, cause I kept hearing in the news, you know, the word democracy, we're, we're democracy and, uh, and it, actually we aren't. Um, some people do say we're a democratic republic or a constitutional republic. And this is the reason why we aren't just a pure democracy. So that word in Greek means demos or parasha. A popular English translation of demos means the people. And parasha, I don't know if I'm saying it right, means to rule. So people rule. We the people rule. Yes. But if... Um, if we just do a democracy, then if 51% doesn't like your religion or your views of anything, let's just say like right now, global warming, they could just um, take over. And um, so that's why the founders decided we needed three different elements. So um, we in the, the Declaration of Independence, it says, um, we hold these truths to be self-evident that government are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the government governed. And then the U.S. Constitution says in America, in, the, in that second founding document, it says in the preamble, it supports the Declaration of Independence by declaring we, the people of the United States, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. And then the Gettysburg Address, President Lincoln's um, renowned speech says government of the people by the people and for the people so that supports the democracy portion um, um, but we can't safeguard life liberty and the pursuit of happiness if we just have that form so the second form is the representation or the second important key element in in the american republican form of government and um so this solution, it says right here under representatives, a, a representative is someone who acts or speaks for others. In the United States of America, representatives are elected by the vote of the people. So that's like what we do in our caucuses. So our representative strives to understand the issues at that particular city or county or state or national level. And we can't learn it all. So that's why we find a representative that's gonna you know, be at each of those levels and that represent us um, and, and so that they are more educated. And so um, they've, they've um, reproved them. Um, and then the second weakness, okay, I said that already, the majority rule or the people rule. And we can, you know, we don't want that. And in all of our 50 uh, state constitutions and our founding documents, the word democracy is not even in there. So we are a republic. So um, then the third element would be, I'm trying to do this fast because we've gone so long, is um, the constitution. 
But before that, James Madison said, a republic, a government in which the scheme of representation takes place, the delegation of the government to a small number of citizens elected to the rest. Um, so that third vital element is that written constitution. And that's why we have our Supreme Court. They're supposed to um, weigh everything against that written constitution to make that balance. So our nation's founders recognize that it is the nature of human beings once in positions of power to have a tendency to want more power often at the expense of the people. Boy, do we see that today. So to prevent elected representatives from taking advantage of the power to govern um, given them by the people, the fathers of our nation created a written constitution or the rules formally approved and ratified by the American people. This means elected representatives are free to express governing power only in those areas specifically defined by the rules in our written constitution. Our elected representatives take an oath to support, obey, and defend the U.S. Constitution as the supreme law of the land. So um, the U.S. Constitution upholds democracy or sovereignty of the American people, we the people, um, not, you know, the elite govern. Uh, and it, it established representative government based on rule of law. That's what we're trying to store right now, rule of law, not ruler's law, those elite ruling over us. So democracy, representation, and constitution is a constitutional republic. Um, some people can say, like I said, a, a democratic republic. They say that too. So um, uh, I just wanted to end by, by reiterating those four ways to stay anchored in hope that we were introduced to was first look to God, not the government, um, prioritize family time and study the constitution from the viewpoint of the founding fathers. I did download um, the 1776 project that um, Trump had developed that we want you know, to be taught eventually in the schools. If anyone wants a copy, they can give me their email address and I'll send it. And then number four, pray about what you're gonna do, whether you're just gonna start your own home. Um, I use my car a lot to, to educate my children um, because they're locked in. <laughs> um, and the, the 28 principles of liberty, I wanted to include a couple of those principles. That's in the 5,000 year leap. So these are the first two of the 28. The only reliable basis for sound government and just human relations is natural law, which is God's law. And two, a free people cannot survive under a Republican constitution unless they remain virtuous and morally strong. And, um, and so if we, we you know, have courage and compassion like the two Dr. Beans and uh, Francis Scott Key, um, and we start asking, God, uh, um, what we can do to help be part of the solution. I think we can be, we can stay anchored in hope. Um, and we can, I, I think if we try to help legislation um, in our school boards or, or in, in, our, in our capitals within our states to make sure we do have the virtuous, virtuous and morally strong people, I think will be that much stronger. I, I do have one personal story before I end. Um, I went to go to the National Archives, which is where the where arts founding documents, the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, and the Declaration of Independence are in. And you you're waiting in this little line, and then you go through a gate, and then you can see them. And then there's two paintings on the wall, and of the founders. And on the floor, while you're waiting, I noticed in the circle that the Ten Commandments were written there, and I thought that was so profound to me. Just the spirit testified to me that you know the foundation of those 10 commandments are right there um and our founders wrote from from the bible they used deuteronomy a lot to to you know and we have to have a virtuous and morally strong people at least that basic 10 commandments and i went back in may um to dc and i went back to to bring my daughter um she was dancing in the area and so to see the founding documents and they're gone. They took them out. And I thought they wouldn't find them because they were on the floor, but they took them out. It just broke my heart. They're not no longer in that circle. It's just, a, it's blank now. Um, anyway, I, I believe that us mothers, um, grandmothers, we can, uh, we can be part of that force that, that if we stay anchored in hope, we can spread the light of um, liberty and the light of of God and his natural law that we were born um, free. And um, I think we can stay 
um, anchored in that, that we'll, we'll be able to help other people around us stay calm and anchored and, and be part of the solution. Does anybody want to say anything? I just love that, Tammy. Thank you so much for the presentation. It's been really, I've been thinking a lot how I can help my children without like overburdening them, but I'm so thankful every one of my children have stayed close to the principles of liberty. And, um, you know, even if they're not active in other things that I'd hope they would, <laughs> maybe some of the scouting and some of the schooling at the support in the areas that we lived really taught those things in the way they lived. And um, I remember my son, my oldest son, who just came into town this weekend, three of them, actually four of them. <laughs> but uh, I, this is just really timely because I know I, I can't do everything, but I can do something. And I think, where as a mother did I, you know, they're having children now and they're a little young to do this, but I'm thinking, what could I do? Because I, I did buy the Tuttle Twins, um, theories but it still is a little old for some of our grandkids and it's like I don't know if I want to just give it to them if they don't use them you know and right. anyway but my oldest son one time we went to a family camp it was a scout thing and they retired the flag um and sent it out onto the lake in this beautiful um like it's kind of like when they burned the bodies of someone royal and they set it out on the water and the ashes would spread everywhere. And I'm not saying that's, you know, the cremation. Anyway, it's just uh, something very symbolic, but they did a ceremony that talked about the old tired flag and how she had waved for so long, Liberty. And um, my son was just in tears and I just, uh, you know, I was too, it was just so poignant. And I'm just hoping those times in the spirit helped them um, you know the hope for america they were saying in that and i'm just grateful for that they had those experiences you know because then they went through really liberal schools college in washington and you know they yeah. they've still stayed true and it just makes me feel so grateful for these principles so thank you well, that's wonderful and that's isn't that amazing that they can go to a class that's teaching incorrect things but still stay true that's what i have found with my my kids too um, and for grandkids, cause a lot of us are, I, I my kids aren't married yet, but I want to be grand <laughs> baby. But if you want to look at, um, the new moms for America manual, cottage meeting manual actually has uh, lots of books and lots of videos and stuff to, and questions for kids. So that if you wanted to do your own little kids thing, and then I, I started, I bought uh, cash Patel has a book, um, that talks about what's going on. Um, and that, that book um, place is called Braid Books, and they've got a lot of um, books to teach liberty, and the same with, with those Tuttle Twin books, right? They're amazing. Um, and so there's a lot of references that you can find, and Moms for America does put quite a few references. They haven't added the children's ones yet that are in this book, but I'm sure they will, so that you can get a list of books that you might um, oh, have to you. see about. Yeah, what? No, they had all that on there for the maybe some of the younger kids just to have yeah. that resource. Yeah. So. And so as a grandma, I know when my my kids would we'd go visit my parents at, at, when they were young and my mom had a toy room, you know, and had things and we'd go to my husband's parents and she had um, books. So maybe you can just do a little basket of books that when they come over, you can read from right to instill it with, you know, grandma can instill that too, or maybe those are the birthday gifts or the Christmas gifts, but we can still do it even when we're grandmas, right? <laughs> Thank you for that, for that so much. You guys, I really am so thankful for everybody that's joined. Um, I, I am going to try to teach every week just because I'd love to be able to get into the, after this, the 5,000 year leap. And then, um, you know, the healing of America, like those are real specific. It really gets into the nitty gritty, um, that series. And then um, when we read the Naked Communist, it, it was eye opening what, um, the what Marxism was and even how um you know his own whole, whole family to study to study who funded him and then also his whole family um he starved them and then they committed suicide 
Um, it, what darkness Marxism is, is opposite of liberty. <laughs> it's, 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 right? It's slavery. Mm -hmm. Now, you know? Yeah. I mean, the younger kids, they, they have, you know, usually if they haven't had that foundation yeah. and, you know, it's about building bridges and yeah. saying, you know, honoring their courage for wanting to do something in the world because they're very cause oriented and to build bridges instead of us versus them or, you know, that we're right, you're wrong. I, I really feel like we can learn the language more of my goodness, look at the courage you have to be on this planet right now and that you're seeking for, for truth, you're seeking for answers, you're seeing poverty, you're seeing all these things and let, you know, how would you set up systems that like, if you were, you know, with your own home, how are you going to set this up? Because the principles are the same for parenting as it is in government, you know, it's wow. the leadership principles that Julene and that you are, you know, showing of yourselves as mothers and the men too, you know, with the leadership skills they have and, and we have different personalities and that the melting pot of America, the brilliance has been bringing those together and having this beautiful potpourri, you know, this tapestry woven in the strength of truth, uh, true principles that elevate every human being. And so anyway, I, um, I just appreciate you doing this um, again. And I, if you, I sent you a link to Dropbox them to me and then okay. I can put this liberty. Oh, thank you so much. And what you just said was just profound. Thank you so much. And um, I mean, seriously, really profound. And that's why I wanted to bring in uh, some principles so that we can we can point those principles out to our kids and, and point them out that, you know, let's have courage and compassion. And, and um, yeah, only a, right there, a free people cannot survive under a public constitution unless they remain virtuous and morally strong. And so, um, you yeah, know. I mean, uh -huh. questions that what you're noticing about different pecking orders or organizations that have, have, force versus fairness fairness isn't even freedom it, that's another form of force but it's hidden right. mass and that's what's coming out and if we can see you know that that liberty you know what does that look like in your life does it mean oh we're a free country i can do anything i want well no <laughs> that's <laughs> nice and so uh -huh. to ask is to teach to tell us to preach and i've done too much of the latter <laughs> mm -hmm. me too I, you That's what, how I taught. I learned as a teacher. We right. We we just did that. We didn't ask. Yeah. Uh, but those are good questions to ask. What does liberty look like? And what is you know? Well, I'll just yes. That there's 600 named ways of creating conflict, coercion. Uh, there's you know control. There's 600 adversarial tactics. If we focus on the five principles of freedom, that you know, like being committed to growth and the worth of every human being, all the things that the constitution teaches agency integrity and instincts trusting your instincts is another way to say go to your higher power and trusting that spirit that of christ that guides all of us or higher power of just self-evident spirit of love i mean it, it's always the it's liberty versus slavery and basically the ideologies are separating out but a bridge to those who have grown up knowing mostly the other, and they think that's how they have to survive. You know, they're in survival. And we bridge them and, and help them um, to claim their individual liberty because that's where it starts is with every human heart. And it takes courage and to honor that courage may be that bridge and just say, you have staying power. Here you are, you're trying to figure it out. I mean, just that, open up a conversation. Oh, wonderful. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else want to add anything before we close? You all give me strength and you all um, help me stay in hope. And I think this is why it's so important to, to do things um, like this and to be, um, to help each other stay motivated and, and, and moving forward to stay in hope. Um, thank you guys. We'll see you next week at 10 o'clock. Okay. We'll see you next week. The next lesson is called No Place Like Home. Okay. Thanks, Tammy. Oh, thank you.